As I told in one of my first videos, the interface concept of the Sonicon family is to make most of the everyday use functions accessible in a single or a couple of button presses. In this video, I'll show how to use functions related to the instrument setup. One of the most important settings of a flood detector is its gain. And now I'd like to describe three gain-related functions used during setup procedure. First of all, we can adjust the gain value with gain minus and the gain plus buttons. We also can choose the step of this adjustment with second function plus gain plus from this set. Point 1, point 5, 1, 2, 3, 6 or 10 decibels. Another option used in some testing techniques is so-called relative gain. In this mode we set the gain to some reference value, let it be 50 decibels in our case, and activate the relative gain mode with second function plus gain minus. The displayed gain value changed to zero and dbr indicator goes on indicating this is not absolute gain, but relative to the reference one. Now we can change gain both up and down watching how it differs from the reference. When we try to turn the relative gain mode off with further press of second function plus gain minus, Sonakan asks us if we would like to keep or discard changes of the gain from the reference value. Pressing enter button we agree to keep the changes and pressing exit button we get back to the reference. Next function auto xx% can be used both during setup and indications evaluation. It automatically adjusts the gain to put the maximum signal amplitude in the gate to the reference level, that is to 80 or 50% vertical scale, depending on the original standards. Another important group of settings are A scan parameters. To drive the A scan, I press the A scan button. The A scan indicator shows we are in the A scan direct control mode. Now we can move the A scan window right or left with right and left arrows, i.e., adjusting A scan delay parameter. We can increase or decrease A scan range with gain plus and gain minus buttons. When changing one of the A scan parameters, the step button cycles its increment decrement step. Down arrow will switch the horizontal axis between distance along the beam, Y coordinate, and time of flight. Up arrow would switch vertical axis between 100 and 110% modes. Enter button would switch A scan between full screen and normal modes. To exit the A scan direct control mode, we can press exit button. After a scan is set up, now we are ready to set up gates. Pressing gate 1 button, we enter the mode of the first gate direct control. The G1 indicator shows we are in this mode. Now we can move the gate right or left with right and left arrows. And up or down with up and down arrows. We can make it longer or shorter with gain plus and gain minus buttons. When changing one of the gate parameters, the step button would cycle its increment decrement step. Enter button would switch the gate on and off. To exit the first gate direct control mode, we can press exit button. Second function plus gate 1 buttons would do the same with the second gate for us. For more gate settings, 
we will have to use gate 1 or gate 2 menu. Here we can set the number of levels from 1 to 3 and positions of each level. Why do we need those extra levels? Let's remind ourselves that according to many UT codes we have two or three sensitivity levels search or scanning and acceptance level and sometimes one more the record or reporting level. So with a single level gate we make scanning on the search sensitivity if found something, we reduce gain to the record level to see if the indication has to be reported. If yes, reduce gain once more to the acceptance level for evaluation. With several gate levels, we can keep an acceptance sensitivity, having preset the gate levels to the corresponding sensitivity levels 80% acceptance level, minus 6 decibels or other according to the code the record level and further the search level. In this case we can forget about the gain change just observing alarm LEDs. It's turned green. We found something. Blue. We are to record the indication. Red. The acceptance level exceeded. This saves us time and attention. Let's concentrate on scanning. Also we can choose the gate logic positive to alert about the indication detection when a signal exceeds the gate level it is used in pulse echo techniques or negative to alert when the reference signal falls below the gate level it is used for through transmission or echo images techniques and finally we can toggle AGC mode for each gate, which is helpful for example for reference signal gating, which allows to automatically compensate sensitivity change due to coupling conditions. Thinking of our new instrument's interface, I was inspired by the circular menu in my video camera, driven with 5 position joystick. Since we don't have such joystick, I decided to use a cross of 5 buttons for arrows and a step button, driving what we now call a quick access menu. We can call the menu with the corresponding button. Further presses of this button scroll three pages of the quick access menu. First page is dedicated to the measurements and alarm settings. Choice of the gates and cursors, which should be used for measurement. measurement point indicating cursor toggle measurement threshold peak or edge which gates to use for indication detection alarm system which gate level would drive sound alarm Second page of the quick access menu enables choosing which indication parameters to show. With arrows buttons, we can choose parameters for four small cells of the information panel and with step button for the large one. The list of parameters depends on the instrument settings, but the full list follows maximum signal amplitude relative to the reference, absolute maximum signal amplitude that is the gain value at which the signal amplitude corresponds to the reference, distance along the acoustic beam, X and Y coordinates, equivalent diameter and area available if DGS system is on, and D rating according to the AWS specifications D1.1 or D1.5 if it's on. The last page of the quick access menu is an options page. Here we can choose measurement units, metric or imperial, interface language, 
display brightness, day or night color schemes. Another important task during the flood detector setup is probe and test piece parameters calibration and sensitivity calibration. Those are rather wide questions, so I decided to dedicate to them separate videos. After we're done with the settings, we need to save them. The fastest way to call the settings storage menu is to press second function plus 3. Here we can see a list of the previously saved setup files and four actions, which can be activated with F1 to F4 buttons. Pressing F1, we enter the file name input window. By default, the name of the file under cursor is taken. We can delete it with F1 button working as a backspace key for us. We can enter the new file names with 1 to 0 buttons, using them as on an old cell phone. That is the successive presses of a button cycle over a several letters or symbols assigned to that button. We also can paste words from the list on the left. To do this, we need to press F4 button to move cursor to the list. Choose a word with the help of vertical arrows and press Enter. We also can insert the current daytime signature in the input line with one button. Press F4 again to get back to the normal text input mode. By the way, we can edit this preset words list in the options dictionaries menu. We press the enter button after we are done with the file name. A comment input window opens. The principles of the text input and preset words and date paste in here is absolutely identical as for the file name. We conclude the comment input with the enter button. Now we can see a new file appeared in the list.